My name is Carly Kinkle. I am an assistant professor of biological sciences at the University of Southern California, and I lead the Nigerian Evolutionary Ecology Lab, or C Lab for short. So, coral are animals. They're related to anemones and jellyfish. If you take an anemone, shrink it down really small, and imagine like a carpet of anemones all stuck together, that's the surface of a coral. And all of those interconnected anemones is actually one genetic individual. Our new grant project is focused on, call it the flexibility of organisms. So sort of how you might train for a particular sporting event, right? And increase your muscle mass. You change the capacity of your body to respond to challenging conditions. And we're really interested in that because that's one of the ways that organisms on this planet are predicted to respond to a changing climate. So our favorite organisms are corals, and this particular mechanism of being flexible in their physiology is really important because they live for really long time periods. So their lifespan can be hundreds if not thousands of years, so the ability of that one organism to withstand lots of different conditions over the course of its life is really important. We found in one of our previous studies that not only can coral be flexible in how they grow in response to different reef conditions, but that different genetic individuals of corals can do that in different ways, where some can be more flexible, some can be less flexible, and that relates to their overall survival. So what we're doing with this particular study is we're trying to ask, okay, we know these individuals differ in their ability to be flexible. What happens when we build a reef with individuals that have the ability to be more flexible or less flexible? Does that affect other properties of the reef ecosystem? We're also trying to understand how that flexibility is achieved at a molecular level. So we're doing some studies to try to understand how different skeletal properties contribute to this flexibility and growth. And finally, we want to understand what are the implications for the next generation, because even though each coral lives a long time, it reproduces every year. And the ability of that next generation to survive is also going to be really important. Coral reef ecosystems are incredibly important because they're the foundation of one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet, um, they house up to 25% of all marine species, right? And that's the reason why we want to go and visit them, why people love to go diving on reefs, snorkeling, take holidays to gorgeous tropical reefs. Um, and that in itself is another service that reefs provide. So those coastal communities that have a booming tourism industry are really benefiting economically from, from the reef itself. In addition, the structure of the reef, so that skeleton that the corals build can also act like a natural breakwater. So if you think of you know cement breakwater systems that you might have seen off of um, off of your local coast, corals do that naturally. So it represents you know a millions of dollar investment from an infrastructure perspective to have a natural reef there. Um, but they are under serious threat right now because of climate change. So corals are experiencing increasingly frequent and severe stress events that's leading to the die-off of many reef ecosystems. The work that we're doing on this project is in direct collaboration with one of those organizations that is involved heavily in reef restoration in the Florida Keys, Moat Marine Lab. Um, this is an organization that's pioneered a lot of restoration technology um, and it makes it really fantastic for the outcomes of our study because we're working with some of their corals. The work that we're doing, um, we're learning about the biology, the basic biology of corals while also restoring reefs at the same time, but also the new information that we discover can be directly applied to future restoration planning.